Today will be a short review of the Sigma 40mm 1.4 art lens here on my hand. And no, without even going to the end of the review, I'll say this guy is a top performer when it comes to image quality. I'm Richard and welcome to Zappy Productions and today we'll talk about the 40mm 1.4 art lens on my hand here. It is a fantastic performer for image quality itself and you can see on this table here they are very high-end lenses such as the 50mm 1.2, the GF 45mm and of course the Sigma Art 85mm. I would say as this lens here outperforms all of them when it comes to image quality even wide open. Now, before I start on the main review itself, I'd like to thank SLR Revolution for loaning me this copy. This is a set that is theirs and I loan it from them. I really love it and I'll probably purchase it sometime soon because when I use it, I really love it. And on the modern Canon R5, it performs very, very well. Now, first, in the full review, I'll talk about in four sections. Firstly, I'll talk about the build quality. Secondly, we will cover the performance in the field. And lastly, we'll talk about its image quality itself. And then I will talk about some of my thoughts, the pricing, the weight, and should you buy it or not at the very end. If you don't want to see to the end, just jump below. There are bookmarks below. If not, I will tell you that this lens is fantastic. As long as you can ignore the weight and size, do get it because for its price, for its performance, its image quality is phenomenal. First, we talk about its build quality here and I will tell you that this is a phenomenal lens when it comes to build quality. It is Sigma Art quality level. Plastic and metal build, very solid, very heavy, 1.2 kg with a nice dampened ring. And this ring has stops that you can feel and you know that it is end of the focus range of the of the lens itself. Now, this is, of course, an old-style DSLR system. So, you can actually turn the ring and focus the lens even without connecting the camera to the lens itself. Unlike modern mirrorless lens where you can actually just turn the ring in finally and there's no feeling to it. There's only one switch on this lens here and that's about it. The notable thing is that this is dust and splash proof. This is claimed by Sigma itself. So they claim that this lens is sealed and it has a front coating on the element as such repelling dust and water. So this is a proper weather sealed lens or should I say, uh, yeah, weather sealed lens, yes, right? Uh, however, as with every weather seal system, you do not know until water seep in. If water don't seep in, it's great. So in the end, even if it's weather sealed, does, do use it with care. However, if you are a professional, at least you know that Sigma is claiming that this is dust and weather sealed. And I try it in light drizzle, it works perfectly fine. That's about it. Other than that, I want to say that this lens is really big and heavy. Compared to the RF, if I put it side by side, you can tell that it is actually bigger. Let me remove the front cap and you really can see that this is bigger it looks like about cm bigger and that's without the adapter don't forget this is ultimately an ef mount lens and this is the rf mount lens so it looks like it's about almost 2 cm bigger now even if you compare with the 85 mm here now you compare you can see that this is actually taller than the 85 mm and it's actually heavier this is 1.2 kg one of the heaviest lens you can get in the market it is 300 gram heavier than the RF 50mm and it is the same way as the 85mm 1.2 even though this is just a 40mm 1.4 so where does all the weight go it goes into the fantastic amount of elements inside there is 16 elements inside and when we go to image quality section it is a really phenomenal lens when it comes to image quality and that's about it for build the last thing on the cover for the build is the hood itself now the hood is a more modern design and it has a button to lock so it locks the hood nicely on the lens and doesn't twist in any way so why does a twisting friction-based hood like the old 85mm is a problem? Because, you know, when you are using in the field, you lock it, right? But if you do accidentally hit it, it does slide slightly and it causes vignetting on your shots. And you can't really tell until you process the shots, which suck. So it is a good thing that they use the click, which is a lot more secure. And you can probably know and feel that the hood is locked onto your lens. So that is a nice improvement in terms of build quality. That's about it for build quality. And next we talk about is performance in the field itself so before i start let me attach this lens so when, once i attach this lens to the r5 body first thing you can tell that this is actually quite a long lens and it is heavy this is 1.2 the adapter is about 100 gram and on the body about 700 gram this is something of a 2 to 2.1 kg setup so it is very uncomfortable to use with one hand it's heavy and it will cause a lot of strain on your wrist However, because the lens is not very huge, you can actually hold the lens anywhere and it feels perfectly fine. Two-hand operation is very stable with this lens. 
because of it's not so big barrel, you can actually hold it quite easily. But one hand operation is something I don't recommend. It causes a lot of strain on your hand itself. So most other 35 mm and 40 mm lenses are a lot smaller. And if weight and size is a problem to you, do get them rather than this 40 mm 1.4 itself. But if not, <laughs> overall two hand handling with this lens is fantastic. Very nice to hold anywhere. Very nice to manual focus too. The next thing I'll talk about is autofocus in the field itself. Autofocus is greatly improved in the latest Sigma glass. Now the old 85mm Sigma here I have has a hit rate of about 80% if you ask me. If you look at some of my R5 videos, I have a feel in my release. It can go at the end. Maybe you can see through my playlist itself. Uh, I would say as the old Sigma lenses have a hit rate of about 80%, which means every 10 shots you fire, 2 shots will probably be not as sharp. However, that is a, probably a problem due to the motto in the AF system itself. The motto of the Sigma 85, you can feel it jumpy, very like you can hear the jumpiness of the motto. Now, that is not the same on this 40mm. In fact, there is no jumpiness and it is very, very smooth. When I was using today, I can't even hear the motto focusing in servo mode. That is how smooth the motto is. It is even smoother than the Tamron, smoother than the 35mm 1.4 f2. It's probably the smoothest lens I heard for a motto system when it comes to servo. Uh, when it comes to small little movement in servo itself. And not only that, its AF is very accurate. It has an accuracy of over 95%. When I mean over 95%, means 95% is tech sharp as long as the box or the AF box or the auto AF, IAF, whatever AF box is on the subject you want to focus itself. It is 95% accurate. Now, the other 5%, I would say some are soft. And that can be due to a lot of factors such as hair, such as lashes, what's not that is blocking the AF system. While there is only maybe two or three that is out of focus in like 180 shots, a hit rate of over 95% is fantastic. It is at least on par with native EF glasses. It is on par with a 200mm f2 autofocus system, if not slightly better. It is almost as close as using a native RF lens. So I won't hesitate to use the 40mm 1.4 on the R5 body with IAF or any form of AF system because I know it will perform and provide the hits that I want for the shots themselves. And the last thing I'll talk about is IS. And IS is not so much of the 40mm problem, it is the R5. And I'll say as the IS itself is slightly lousier than using native RF glass. Now, if you use it on static subject, as you can see in the photos here, 120 will yield you about 70 to 80% hit rate, 110 will yield you about 60, 50, 60% hit rate. But when you shoot real humans themselves, I notice that 140 is the lowest I can go. Unlike using my 50mm 1.2 here, I notice that I can go as low as maybe say. 125 or 120 but i cannot do it with this lens so i don't think it's a restriction due to the lens it's just that because it goes through your adapter it is an ef glass and on the r5 system it just doesn't is as much as a native rf glass itself there is something to just note it is not a 40 mm problem but at least you get some is better than no is at all and that's about it for handling in the field with the r5 the sigma 40 mm is fantastic and phenomenal when it comes to af very smooth very nice, very accurate. However, it is not very fast, just to note. To close off this, the AF system from minimum to maximum focusing is not very fast. That is something you have to note because I think it's moving a lot of elements inside. And the last thing I'll talk about is image quality of this lens. As I said earlier in my review, the image quality of this lens is phenomenal. It's better than anything on this table. Let me explain. So first, you look at this comparison. 40mm and 50mm 1.2 RF. You can straight away tell that this guy is sharper without even zooming in. And when you zoom in, you can tell that, you know, there is some sort of blooming and hazing uh, due to the bright light and the reflection and a little bit more CA on the 50mm 1.2, even in the center. At the corner, this guy is totally <laughs> on a rampage. It is way sharper than the 50mm 1.2 at the corner itself. Now, the 50mm 1.2 is a 1.2 lens. If you stop down at 1.4, it is pretty much on par with this lens. Maybe slightly not as sharp. This guy still feels slightly sharper even after the 50mm 1.2 is stopped down. That's something to know. However, 1.2 is still a 1.2 and when you need a 1.2, it gives you that 1.2 and that is where this lens is still worth its price itself. And when you're shooting portrait, you may not need the absolute, absolute sharpness and this 50mm 1.2 is definitely way sharp enough for the purpose of portraiture. While this 40mm 1.4 is extremely tech sharp. Now, if you compare the GF45mm, it's very interesting. In the center, it looks about the same, but in the edge, 
this 40mm 1.4 is sharper than the 45mm f2.8 even though this is a 2.8 lens and this is a 1.4 lens now if you do stop this down i believe that this will be sharper i have not tested it but even at 1.4 you can tell that in terms of flatness of plane in terms of sharpness at the corner this lens outperformed the 45mm 2.8 itself now, if you notice the test so far, you notice some CA here and there. You notice there are some CA in the 50mm 1.2. But you notice that it's very little CA on the 40mm 1.4 itself. In fact, the CA is quite comparable with the 45mm f2.8. You know, I think that this is slightly better corrected. But don't forget, this is 2.8 and this is a 1.4. If you go online and look at the comparison, this is probably one of the lowest CA lens you can get in the market. That is not a f2.8 or f4 medium format lens. Very top-notch performance and so far, I think the only lens that I feel I used before that outperforms this lens is like the 85mm 1.2 RF and the GF110 which both of them are fantastic and they are probably Otis quality level. I will say this is Otis quality because this lens definitely outperforms the Otis 55mm because I have compared before the Otis 55mm with the RF 50mm here and the Otis 55mm loses to the RF 50mm definitely it will lose to the 40mm 40 40 1.4 Sigma art here. Fantastic image quality if you ask me. Now, sharpness is of course throughout the plane as you can see so far. Sharp in the center, sharp at the edge. CA, very low in the center, low at the edge. And pretty much for image quality, if you look at real field tests, i show you some of the shots here. I zoom in 100%. The lashes are very tech sharp. The autofocus system is very accurate. As such, everything looks very, very nice and contrasty. One thing I do note that the contrast of this lens is not very high. I find that the 50mm 1.2 here tend to be slightly contrastier. I'm not very sure. It's a very subjective thing and you can actually post-process a lot in that. But out of the sh out of the camera shot, this looks slightly closer to like the 200mm f2 which is a slightly lower contrast but very, very sharp image. That's the feeling I get from terms of image quality. And last thing I'll talk about is bokeh. And you can see some of the shots here have bokeh, but I don't find anything special with the bokeh. I don't find them very smooth, very silky. I'll say as the 50mm 1.2 is smoother. So if bokeh is your biggest priority and shooting portrait is your biggest priority, don't mind a slightly longer lens. The 50mm 1.2 RF outperforms the 40mm 1.4 if you ask me when it comes to things like bokeh. And that's about it for image quality. This is a phenomenal lens when it comes to image quality, especially for shooting portraiture. Very sharp everywhere in the frame you can just use the lens however you like whenever you like with the r5 you get perfect autofocus performance anywhere too and to really close off this whole video i would say is the only weakness of the 40mm 1.4 that is really the size and that's because it is a really huge lens as i shown you in the build quality section now if you don't mind a 35mm in fact most people will probably prefer a 35mm the tamron is lighter is shorter is cheaper Image quality wise, if you go online and see, the center is probably as sharp, if not even slightly sharper than the 40mm 1.4 Sigma here. The corners, the Sigma is slightly better. You can look at the charts, look at the comparison. Normally, the Sigma will beat the Tamron at the corners itself. But most important difference between the Tamron and the Sigma is the CA. And if you are like me, very, very touchy with the CA because no matter how sharp a lens is, the CA will kill the sharpness. The moment there is high contrast area, very bright and very dark areas, CA will kill your photo faster than any amount of sharpness can protect it from. So if you ask me, I prefer this lens over the Tamron purely because there is less CA and there is definitely less problem when it comes to the final shot itself. But if you want a 35mm, you want a lighter lens, the Tamron is out there for you. And if you want a really cheap 35mm lens, there's always the 35mm 1.8 Canon RF lens here. Now, you notice I didn't compare it because it is totally a different leg, a leg lower because that lens can't beat the RF 50mm 1.2 and the lens has a very jumpy AF which I personally don't like because this lens probably outperformed the 35mm 1.8 RF lens in, com in terms of AF. So, this is definitely better itself. Now, when it comes to the final part which is pricing. Now, in Singapore, this is 1450 plus minus a few dollars here and there and that translates to about 1050 USD. In US itself it is 1399. It's quite expensive compared to the Tamron which is 900 USD itself. There is a 500 USD difference. So is 500 USD difference worth the lower in CA? It may not be. Is it worth that corner sharpness? It may not be. It really depends on your usage. However, there are occasional discounts in US that will drop you to 999 and then it becomes very, I would say, as compelling to purchase this over the Tamron, especially if you are like me, very sensitive to CA. 
However, in Singapore itself, I recommend this lens because this is 1450 and the Tamron is about 1300. Plus minus, as I say, $10, $20 on the pricing, depending on your payment mode and stuff. So definitely, you know, when the price range is so close, I recommend this because if you ask me, CA is harder to correct than sharpening the photo. And more often than not, you don't really need that amount of extreme detail, but you do want no CA because CA will just damage the color, dash damage the photo and damage your sharpness. Overall, I prefer this lens and purely because the image quality on this lens is really phenomenal. And I want to close this off really is that if weight and size is not your biggest concern and you don't mind paying just a slight more than the Tamron itself, this lens is phenomenal. It is definitely better than the native lenses, the 35mm 1.4 version 2. It is definitely better than even the RF 50mm 1.2 when it comes to optical performance. It is really top-notch as long as you can live with the 40mm range and don't mind the weight and size. Overall, this is pretty much my review of the Sigma here. I highly recommend this as long as you can get over the weight and size. And on the R5, with its improved AF motor from Sigma, it works fantastically well. I really would think that, you know, if you need a range like 40mm, this is definitely the lens you should put in your bag. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you want to see more of such review, do like, subscribe. And of course, put down comments below what you want to see. If not, till the next time, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.